Yeah, because I mean, this is an incredible true story. I just wonder, I mean, I, like I just mentioned before, I went into it, I didn't know anything about this, but did you guys have a pre-established knowledge of this this world, these characters, or when you when you were sort of offered this screenplay or got involved, was it kind of, did you go in sort of blind to some degree? I didn't know anything about this until this came my way, did you? Either did I, no. I mean, I knew of the Chippendales. I grew up in Australia, and so there was sort of this... You guys have you Thunder know, Down Under. We do, but we, they came after the Chippendales. So we, I was aware of the whole sort of Chippendales phenomenon, but had no idea there was this, you know, rich kind of dark story that was going on behind the scenes. I thought the Chippendales were named after the Disney characters. Uh, they too. are. They're the <laughs> original strippers. Yeah. Yeah. Keep I mean, they're not wearing any them. clothes. One no. of them's only wearing a little hat and a little jacket. That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you should have done a routine based on that. Uh, yeah, that's true. Like that's a true. Slutty yeah. Indiana Jones. Little, little known fact about the Chippendales. Yeah. But, but I mean, come on, I know you're sort of, a, you have to, as an actor, you have to play a myriad of different characters, but I mean, there's so, but when you get a character like someone and, and you read and see his journey, it must feel like, yes, <laughs> you must just yeah. go, what a role. Yeah, I, I mean, that's why I took it. I was so excited. And, you know, I don't have opportunities like this, really. I get to play comedic stuff, which I love doing. But doing something like this, you know, where it goes really dark. And, uh, uh, yeah, I was just really excited to be able to do it. I know you're a professional actor and this is something you're used to, but is it particularly hard to shoot something like this out of sequence, considering the journey that the character It goes is, on? although we didn't shoot it out of sequence. Oh, really? We were able to shoot it, like, two episodes at a time. Yeah. And then towards the end, I sort of asked certain scenes to be shot after other scenes, and they were very kind enough to oblige me. Um, my my uh, d diva demands. <laughs> but they, yeah, we got to shoot it in sequence. And so that, because sometimes, you know, sometimes I'll be watching your show and you can tell. Like, so you'll have a scene where a couple fights, and then the next scene, they're apologizing, but the fight was way more vicious than the the apology should have been way deeper. And you're like, oh, these were obviously shot out of sequence. So you can, I can sometimes pick that out. So I'm lucky we were able to shoot this mostly in sequence. Yeah, often you find things in scenes that you didn't expect, and if you shoot them out yes. of sequence, then it's right. It's really tricky. Yeah. So yeah. we, I mean, I also, I mean, you, you sometimes you just have to shoot out of sequence. But I think a lot of actors always push for it's way yeah, better shooting in sequence. I was watching a show where someone gets mugged, and it's a really violent mugging. Right. And they come home and tell their friends, and they just like. I just got mugged. It's like, what? Right. Yeah, I'm sure they did the violent mugging later. <laughs> right, I just yeah. got mugged. Right, that was yeah. awful. Yeah. Um, I, 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 you know, when you take on a role, let's say, as like a dance choreographer, how much do you kind of, in, in terms of like the kind of get capturing the physical nuances of the role, do you do much kind of studying of the craft, some sort of lessons and stuff like that? Or are you one of those actors, I know everyone's got a different kind of approach, yeah. that just takes what's on the page and just can turn up and kind of do it just on watching TV and, and stuff. In other words, like kind of your, your research for a character like this. I mean, I think for me, one of the like joys of being an actor is getting to dive mm. into the things that are presented to you. So I go as deep as I can into that stuff as in, in the time that I have. We had amazing choreographers on the show, and so I worked with them, and they figured out stuff that you know was that I could do, <laughs> that was sort of fit my body, and and yeah, and then I just like drilled that stuff in my living room, you know. Um, so I I really embrace that kind of opportunity because I think it's part of the fun of it, especially something like this. I mean, to it's sort of like a it is like a kind of an actor's dream of like I get to like dance on screen. I mean, I don't know. It was su super fun. So I wanted to look like I knew what I was doing. I hope I did. You really did. It was, <laughs> did. It's really, that's why I lost. It's really <laughs> impressive because I wasn't privy to all the uh, rehearsals, you right, know, but right. so when we, for me, I just showed up and they're doing a scene and he's teaching how to dance and he really had all the moves down and knew what to say to them. And it was really impressive. The first one we, that I saw you do was in the parking lot. Okay. Where you're yeah, doing yeah. the auditions, right? It yeah. really was like, wow, Murray's put a lot of work into this, and right from the beginning, you were like really on it with all the moves. Oh, that's so good. I also watched impressive. all that jazz a lot because it's yes. <laughs> but did you watch Unicorn Tales? I yes. absolutely yeah. watched Unicorn yeah. Tales. Have you watched Unicorn no, Tales? No, no. You can find it on yeah. on YouTube, and it's like it's phenomenal. And I mean, Kamal laughs at me because I'm just. I don't I'm, laugh. I support. I well, love you it. have a smirk when you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you haven't seen Unicorn Tales? <laughs> yeah. It's such a, it's, I mean, I guess because I really love this person, Nick DeNoy, who Nick DeNoy was, and I, and 
one of the sort of revelations of of the man, I think, is watching Unicorn Tales because you get a sense of what's in his mind. And it's extraordinary because he made this very sort of, you know, um, uh, it, it's very cheap. I think they didn't have a lot of money, but it's this really elaborate children's show that he made, you know, in and around the streets of New York. And it's like, it's epic. I, I love it. Recommend. I will watch that. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, there are many kind of elements to this story. As I just mentioned, it does kind of take a sort of, you know, go sort of down dark sort of avenues. But I was interested about the exploring. I mean, what these guys did was pretty sort of revolutionary in a way. I mean, the Chippendales, it sort of really helped women express and take ownership over their kind of sexuality. And, and also, I mean, to, to objectify men as well for a change. Was that an interesting element to also explore through this, through this story? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely. I think it was accidental in terms of the people who created Chippendales. Did they just idea? wanted to make money. Yeah, yeah. really. But it, what it did ride that wave of um, uh, women sort of coming into their, their bodies in a different way and being able to express their sexuality in a different way in the 70s and 80s and sort of <clears throat> riding that wave of, of female empowerment and, and, you know, reversing roles was sort of a revolutionary thing but it was really just sort of accidentally riding that wave, I think. Um, and I think a lot of women in L.A. at the time really embraced that, but it was not intentional by Steve Bannerjee. No, it wasn't. They just, <clears throat> I think, right place, right time kind of thing, you know. It, they unknowingly gave women a place to express a part of themselves that they hadn't been able to express publicly. Yeah. I was reading a command that you had to sort of alter your physical appearance for this. And I've always been, when I was growing up, I always thought when actors had to maybe sort of put on a bit of weight for a character, I always thought that would be <laughs> like a dream. I was like, oh, well, I just get to eat like McDonald's every night. It'd be great. But I, I've, when I've spoken to us, it sounds like it is, can actually be quite challenging and quite tough. How was it for you, the kind of process of, of doing that for this role? It was great for a very long time. Um, and then it got a bit, because I didn't do it in a healthy way. I ate. McDonald's, yeah. not that McDonald's yeah. isn't healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to cover all my bases, whatever. I don't know what sponsorships may be coming my way. Um, so I just, you know, I met with a bunch of nutritionists and they said, this is the healthy way to do it. And I said, that sounds boring. I know how to do it myself. And so towards the end of it, it kind of took its toll on me, but I genuinely enjoyed it for most of the time. Mm. Have you ever had to do that before, Barry, change, alter your weight for a, for a role? I haven't been asked to. I've sort of done it myself <laughs> because I've wanted to usually, yeah, the other way of trying to like, okay, I better get rid of my belly for this. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I've never had to do a sort of big physical transformation like this. Although I feel like in this show, we had such an extraordinary costume, hair and makeup sort of team. And I felt like there was the, it was quite a transformation in the beginning of the show, particularly that I got to go through, which was super helpful for the character and really like fun to do. I did a junket in this, pretty much in this exact room, just before Christmas for a TV show here called The Rig. And it was interesting because the consensus at the end of kind of every interview was kind of they were all looking forward to potentially a second season. When you make something like this, where it's pretty much guaranteed just to be that kind of one season, does it feel more akin to signing up to a, to a movie in some regards, knowing that there isn't that potential for, for you know, exploring it further down the line? It, it's like shooting a really long movie. Mm. And I, you know, when we were done with this series, I was... I was glad to have a little break, but I was very sad to not be able to work with this group of people again because we can't do another season. I don't think that's possible. But I had such a great time working with everyone, and it, it is kind of a shame that we can't, that this isn't another, you know, five months together to look forward to. And just very quickly before I go, Murray, I was going to ask, because like everyone else, I've just started The White Lotus literally like a week ago. Right. Um, and I'm just wondering, because obviously this is a, obviously a great series. That's a great series. I just wondered, sort of, when you sort of make, comes to making really great choices, what is it for you when you see a role, you see a project, you go, yes? Because at the moment, it's been some pretty impressive stuff on your resume. Well, thank you. Mm. I mean, that's been very recent for me to have choices, you know, in the last couple of years. So I love that. <laughs> uh, and, you know, and, and with choices you get to sort of ask well what I've found is I get to ask questions about well, what is it that I actually want to do and be able to kind of hone in on that and what I want to do is you know stories that I feel are putting something worthwhile out in the world and something that I feel connected to and a character that I feel like I really want to explore and people that I want to work with and this show just ticked all those boxes like through the roof so yeah. 
Thank you so much for your time, guys. Much appreciate Thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!